Good morning, everyone. I'm Alice Marwick. I'm a research analyst at Savills, and previously I covered South American markets, and now concentrating on Southern, Euro Southern Europe. So I'll be looking at where the opportunities are in Southern Europe, starting with the economics, investment, fundamentals, and where the opportunities lie for the future. So Spain at the moment is the golden boy of Southern Europe. If we look at GDP growth, it's above European average. As is Portugal, the GDP growth this year forecast at 3%. Portuguese unemployment is down to below 10%. And Greece's economy is starting to recover. And we look at the unemployment as a percentage of active population. Although still high in comparison to European average, if we remember only a few years ago, especially in Spain and especially in Greece, the unemployment was approaching the 30% figure amongst, over, amongst under 25s. If we look at the H1 investment volumes, they're up 58% to the 10-year average, and the H1 investment <coughs> volume in, in Southern Europe totals 9.8 billion, which is up 27% year on year. And it now accounts for 10% of the total European volumes, up from 7% a year ago. Since 2014, Spain has overtaken Italy to take lion's share, and it's on course to surpass its historic peak of 10 billion by year end. And the Italian volumes, although down year on year, are actually in line with the long term average. And if we compare southern Europe to other European regions, it's actually not that far off the Nordic regions, which are so far totaling 15 billion, and looks like Spain is actually catching up with investment volumes in Sweden. So who's investing? Well, cross-border investors in particular are looking at Southern Europe, and cross-border investors are um, investing through the Spanish Sassimis. In Spain, the cross-border investment volumes total 62%, and in general, domestic investors are not as active amongst the Southern European markets as other EU countries. Greece is still dominated by the local markets, however, so, uh, so far, is that EU neighbours are investing up to 50% in Southern Europe, closely followed by 30% with US funds. We haven't seen much activity with Asian investors yet, however, come 2018 2019, they might start to move away from the core markets and into Southern Europe. So what are they buying? Well, there's a disparity between the countries. In Spain, retail is taking most of the investment volume, with over 2.4 billion euros invested in H1 whereas Portugal office investment has overtaken retail. In Italy, offices represent over 50% of the investment volume of approximately 1.7 billion. And the Greek hospitality sector has been what's catching cross-board investors' eye. So when we look at yields, yields have compressed below their historic peak, particularly in Italy and in Spain. And if we look at the curve cycle, whereas Athens and Lisbon are on an upward trajectory, Milan is catching up with Madrid and Barcelona, and although yields are compressing fast at the moment, in prime high street retail and in offices, they're below, already below 5% in Spain and Italy. But then again, they are expected to compress for even further still. And the yields in Southern Europe are attractive because they actually offer more opportunities than the core markets. They're compressing faster than Nordics, Benelux, and the core markets of France, Germany, and the UK. So there is still room to move in, which in turn means Prime rents are rising, and what's important to remember with the southern European markets, there's a lack of good quality stock, especially office stock, within the CBD, and investors are acting differently. Previously, investors were willing to look into secondary or even tertiary markets. They're even not so willing, so this is a case for developers, and for opportunistic funds, perhaps their time has passed, there isn't that much room to move there, so now would be a time for core and core value add investors to come in and look at development opportunities or even refurbishments, and which in turn meant non-CBD rents are also rising. They're rising at a slower pace outside than the CBD. Retail rents, on the other hand, are rising more modestly, but it's really the lack of space that's pushing prime prices up. And now tenants are having to move outskirts into um, non-CBD and also into secondary locations. So what are the risks? Well, as always, the risks tend to be political. And having spoken to my Madrid colleagues, they're saying, well, the Catalan independence movement, which has been gathering a lot of press in the last couple of weeks, isn't really going to take um, a great turning point. However, I do remember distinctly, 2007-2008, we were saying the same about the Scottish independence. And I didn't want to mention Brexit, but we also said Brexit would never happen. However, if we actually mirror the Catalan independence movement to what happened in Scotland, it's unlikely to affect investment into mainland Spain, 
with what happened in Scotland, banks stopped lending to anyone wanting to invest north of the border, yet it didn't affect greatly the investment volumes in England. The Greeks, well, they've had a hard time due to austerity, and local population are not shy about vocalising their discontent. And with regards to Lisbon, we've seen tourism really take off in Lisbon, and Airbnb in particular, but I'm wondering how long, in the, how long is it going to be before the local governments start to put in restrictions towards Airbnb to mirror what's happened in Barcelona and to mirror what's happened in Berlin. And speaking of tourism, if we look closely at that photo, there's me there trying to take a selfie in Greece. But, <laughs> but we can see tourist numbers are rising all across southern Europe. Spain is the third largest tourist market in the world. And if you look at the top 10 overnight visitors in 2016, four southern European cities are in the top 10. And in the bar chart below, for annual growth rates, why Lisbon isn't in the top 10, it's one of the top five fast, fastest growing cities in, in regards to tourist numbers. That's largely due to the Chinese visitors. Chinese visitors were up 16% last year, largely thanks to the Golden Visa Scheme, which was introduced in 2013. Originally aimed at Brazilian investors, Brazilians didn't come over due to their economic crisis, so it's the Chinese who've had the biggest uptake. And this will have an impact further on local retail and on food and beverage. Another industry which investors will continue to look at is the tech. Now, e-commerce hasn't really taken off as much in Southern Europe as in the Nordic countries or in Northern Europe. However, as the unemployment, especially youth unemployment, begins to fall, we may see e-commerce build and the growth of um, online retailers will improve. Barcelona has a strong culture of uh, co-working and Madrid is enjoying particularly strong um, tech growth this year. And one of the few positives come out of such high unemployment rates, especially youth unemployment, is how the millennials in Southern Europe have become very entrepreneurial, with Portugal in particular seeing more and more startups. And so with this, they're able to expand their startups through tech, and in which case will expand into more business enterprise, co-working spaces, and general office space. So to conclude, they're all at different stages of the cycle. Said for opportunistic investors, I'd say Spain, their time has passed, and so now the opportunistic investors will start looking more towards Portugal and Greece. Italy, while it's still facing political challenges, the local population is still very wealthy. Greece is still under EU supervision, but if we compare what happened in 2014 2015, it's not as bad as the previous few years. The traditional sector is more competitive, so what we may see is investors looking towards alternative assets to mirror what's happened in Germany and the UK because of overpricing. And a tight CBD office market will offer opportunistic investors strong returns either from development or refurbishments. And from what I also remember just attending these conferences, to use of a better word, there was nothing but doom and gloom when we looked at Southern Europe. And considering they had the rather unfortunate nickname of the pigs of Europe, well, for the pigs. <laughs> <laughs>